So Across Narland is a manga that's first published in Shonen Jump, and next season it's coming out with an anime adaptation that actually looks really good. And you, as soon as read the manga, the first arc is really great. You know, you should really check it out. But then after that, it really just falls apart. So I was gonna do this big unscripted bit of that, okay? All right. So Prost and Arland is a story that follows three characters, Emma, Norman, and Ray. So all three of these characters just live in this orphanage, where every day they're just tested on their intelligence, and you know, they're like force-fed facts and knowledge, so make of that what you will. But one day, one of the kids is like leaving the orphanage, and you know, they're gonna move on to their new family. But this little girl, Connie, leaves her stuffed rabbit behind. So Emma goes and tries to like give a rabbit to her before she goes. And that's when Emma learns that the orphanage is actually a farm that like raises kids to be food for a group of giant monsters. And like Connie is just super dead. So with this new information, Emma just goes back into the orphanage. And there she kind of like comes to the realization that, you know, it's more like a prison, like, suddenly she realizes there are, like, bars on the windows, you know, they're being, like, watched over all the time, they have, like, wide outfits so that, you know, if they escape, they'll, like, show up dirt and stuff, it's crazy, so, you know, with this knowledge, Emma, like, goes to her friends Ray and Norman, and she, like, gets them together, and, you know, the guard, the three of them try and like find a way to like escape from the farm and you know find their like own way in life basically. So like what the first arc of the Promise Narland is, is is basically one giant really awesome like strategic escape series right? Like all the characters are just trying to like you know play information like mind games against each other as they like try and find their own way to like escape this place so they can survive you know there's like all kinds of like you know great twists and turns there's like you know like emma gets ray on this and it turns out that ray doesn't think they should try and save the our kids you know ray wants them to like escape on their own because it's safer but emma wants to save everyone and meanwhile, Norman's in love with Emma, so he's, like, taking her side, but at the same time, he kind of is, like, his own motives and objectives. Because he knows that Ray has a point, and he wants Emma to survive. So from there, you know, they start, like, slowly gathering allies. And that's when the caretaker of the house, Mom, introduces a new woman to, like, take care of them, which is this black woman named Crone. And this introduces this whole new element to the series, because Crone is sort of trying to, like, help the kids sort of, like, escape, but keep them there. So, like, if there is an attempted breakout, she can, like, pin the blame on Mom. And, like, you know, if Mom leaves, then Crone gets her position, which is, you know, like, highly valued, you know, like, proper thing. So there's just all these, like, mind games and these, like, you know, political boys going around, basically. Where it's like everyone's kind of trying to fool and outsmart each other while at the same time making moves to, you know, progress towards this one goal. And it sort of starts like come to a head when mom finds out what Chrome's up to and she just has the demons, you know, the monsters just like show up and just kill her. And it's just this really awesome panel, so eventually, you know, the kids start training and they like, you know, manage to get the upper hand. And like because of that, they're able to like form this huge plan where they like just set the like house on fire and they manage to go away, partially because, you know, mom lets them. And also, like, somewhere during this time, it's revealed that, like, Ray was the one who set this all in motion because he, like, left the rabbit behind for him to find. Because Ray knows, like, what's up with the farm beforehand because he remembers his memories as a baby. And Mom is, like, Ray's mother. It's, it's really crazy, but yeah. So that's the first arc, and that's probably what the anime is going to mainly cover. So that's just an awesome story, you know, like, when the anime comes out, that's going great, you know, I can't wait for it.
problems are start immediately after they leave the house. So here's the thing, right? You, know, you get all these kids out and they escape into the woods and they like leave the farm behind. Well, they don't get all the kids out, but they get like a good chunk of them. They get like a lot of them out. So after that, the series just sort of shifts gears because they're outside the house and now they have to like survive in the wilderness. But there's not really that strategic element anymore because there's no one to really pit wits against. So it turns into this thing where they have to like deal with these like monsters and the wild and survive and it's not as interesting. Eventually they end up getting saved by like two of the demons and there's this kind of cool twist where they like kind of want to eat them at some later point. But it's just sort of there and gone and it's just never really explored or anything. But yeah, so after that, like, the kids, you know, leave off and they, like, find their way to this, like, safe house that's this, like, bunker they found that was, like, left for them by, like, allegedly, like, you know, someone in the past who was, like, there before the, like, demons took over or whatever. It's, like, still very unclear. They go into this house and they end up meeting this man who's, like, at first he just goes by that man because he refuses to, like, introduce himself. But later we just found his name is Yugo, and it's this weird thing because it's, like, he doesn't give his proper name, but, like, it just feels like, you know, the writer just didn't think of a name for him yet, and he just stalls for time for, like, way too long. So when, you know, you find Lur's name, and it's like, oh, he's Yugo, it's just like, oh, okay, this changes absolutely nothing. But what are the kids, like, find Yugo in this, like, underground bunker. It turns out Yugo's this, like, grown man who was, like, you know, one of the, like, former runaway kids, right? But, like, the other kids he escaped with got in and killed, so he's very, like, you know, down on these kids' quests. They, like, you know, like, doesn't want to get attached to but eventually, you know, the kids, like, force themselves into his life and, like, force him to kind of, like, you know, deal with them because they set up bombs inside the bunker and it was just like, hey, like, help us out or we'll just blow up your home. And Yugo's just like, I guess I have no choice then. Uh, maybe I'll try and kill them somewhere on the road, but whatever, I guess. This is kind of, you know, where we start, like, getting into this big quest, right? And, you know, the kids find that, you know, there's this, like, pin they have that, like, you know, shows the location that leads to some man named William Minerva. And Minerva is, like, some guy who can potentially help save them for real and, like, get a place for him to live or something. So they have to, like, you know, follow the, like, messages on the pin to try and find them. They like, they follow the pin and it takes them to this location known as Goldie Pond. And here's where, like, you know, the second arc starts the Goldie Pond arc. But they, like, end up at this, you know, place that's like, there's always kids there. And it's, you know, this, like, theme park kind of place. There's, like, giant windmills and stuff, you know, it's, like, horns everywhere. There's lots, like, blast music. And it turns out it's a legal demon hunting ground for, like, eating kids. So you might think, you know, okay, yeah, this is gonna be awesome, you know, the dudes are gonna, like, you know, con their death, like, outthink these students, it'll be, like, the first arc again, it'll be all, like, intricate and strategic and stuff, but no, that's not really what happens at all, because it turns out, like, the kids at this hunting ground just somehow managed to, like, get a hold of guns, and it's never explained, we never know, like, where they got the guns from, or, like, how they have so many rounds or whatever, they just have guns now. So because of this, they just sort of plan this counterattack against the demon. <laughs> Where, you know, we learn that, like, the dunes can regenerate, but, like, they can, like, die if they're, like, shot in, like, the specific, like, core in the center of their head. So it just turns into the kids just going around, just trying to plan out how to just, like, just barrage these demons with just, like, hundreds of, like, gunshots. 
and just blast these things so that they can just escape, and it just sort of worked. Like, there's a point where they find some, like, experiment on human or something who throws a house, and, like, they run to, you know, Lubis, who's, like, this dude who wants someone to kill him, and he has this whole, like, you know, like, thing going on, where he wants this, like, challenging pun, you know? You know, he wants to fight human does like, you know, the power to, like, you know, potentially defeat him, so it'll be, like, fun for him. And they just sort of defeat Lubis by, like, hitting him with, like, a flashbang, and then just unloading every single bullet they have into him at once, until he eventually just sort of, you know, gets really weakened, and then Yugo just shows up out of nowhere and just snipes him in the face, and that's just the end of it. That's just, this, you know, this gun the demons down, and that's just it. There's, like, not really that intricate, like, political game going on. They don't really have to, like, out think them that much. You know, they just have guns, they just go on and they just do it. They have to like conserve these special bolts to like break their like masks open so they don't hit the weak spot, but like other than that, you know, it's just like yeah, it's just so far from what the first arc was even about. Yeah, things don't stop there, oh no, cause like after that, they go through this, like, super confusing period, right, where it's, like, they go back to the base, and they, like, bring a bunch of the R kids with them that, like, no one knows or, like, really cares about, because they were never, like, that well introduced or established, so there's just, like, 30 kids running around, and, like, outside of, like, Emma and Ray, you don't know who any of them are. They lost Norman somewhere along the way. I think he, like, gets taken away, like, back at, like, the first arc at some point. And, like, he just doesn't show up again. But, yeah, so, um, just, like, these kids around there, it's like, okay, well, now we have to, like, find, like, Goldie Pond didn't really, like, go as much, so now we have to, like, find a way to, like, get to, you know, where the, like, humans live. <laughs> And to like, you know, find the human half of the world. So they sort of go out and they find this giant, like, Stonehenge like structure that's shaped like an eyeball. And it just has this psychic conversation with this demon child there. He's just sort of like, oh, it's not time to do this yet. So it was just like, okay, I guess we'll just leave this place and we'll like come back and, you know, maybe this will mean something eventually. And after that, there's just this random year-long time skip completely out of nowhere. Where it's like, no, it's not a year, it's like six months, right? So there's just this giant time skip. And like, all these kids are like, well, acquainted and stuff now. But like, I still have no idea who like, half of them are. Like, half is actually pretty jerk, so it's like more than half. So it's just like... All these kids are, like, close friends, and they're like, yo, they all know each other really well and stuff, but you don't know them, so it's just like, uh, who's Connie? Like, who is, is that, like, Rebecca? I don't know. Man, <laughs> so, um, this is time skip, and the kids just sort of, like, show up in, like, one of the demon villages in disguises. And they go into this demon temple and they like, yo, know, find this like painting on the ceiling that means something, I think. It's not really well explained. And they just sort of like leave and go back to their little base. And like, I'm probably making that sound like it's way less time than it is, but no, like the process from like Goldie Pond through, like, all these weird little, like, pit stops and ram chapters to, like, the next actual thing happening is just such a weird read to get through. It's, like, so bad. But yeah, so eventually they, like, you know, get back to the base, and it turns out, like, the demons have sent in, like, a human-like task force to, like, kill the kids. It's so, like this man just sort of like, you know, with all these like armed soldiers just like storms through an underground base. As this man named Anderson, I think his name is. Yeah, he just gets inside there and he just starts like gunning people down. And it's like, okay, so this is gonna be like this strategic thing again, right? You know, they're gonna have to like, you know, find some way out with them, but like, instead of sort of, you know, go through like a side tunnel and they just sort of escape. 
him, like, you know, Hugo, like, stays behind and he, like, blows himself up to, like, you know, take out Anderson. So the kids, you know, just go away and they're, you know, out of the woods or on the run. And they just look over and Anderson is somehow still alive, but he's, like, half, like, burned and stuff. Yeah, and Anderson's like, no, you kids are nothing, you're just gonna be like food, yo, you're like beneath me, kids, you're like, you, you were made to be food, and yo, know, that's why you won't be able to, like, kill me, even though I'm, like, constantly killing your friends, and, you know, I'm killing all these kids at gunpoint, and, like, taking hostages and stuff, and it's, you know, this, like, super built-up moment, where it's, like, Oh, it's like, and they're going to have to, like, actually take a human life and, like, you know, deal with, like, the consequences of that and stuff. But then, like, a dude just shows up really out of nowhere and just eats Anderson. And it's just like, oh, okay, just screw me for caring, I guess. That was, like, nothing. That really sucked. That was just so bad. He gets, like, taken out by random chance as, like, an ironic note. And, like, no one really had to, like, outplan him. Like, no one really had to, like, outthink anything he was doing. It just happened. Now we're getting to, like, the, like, current stuff. And this is the stuff that really just ticks me off. Anderson dies. And they're just sort of, like, a chapter where it was just, like, oh, like, I feel so bad about all these kids who died. But, like, they don't even name any of them. I don't care. These, this is just so poorly handled. It's so bad. Oh, man. Ah. The first arc of this series is so great, and then it just falls apart. So we just sort of go on, and there's just this chapter where it's just like, oh, they're just, like, hunting normal animals, and it's just the most boring thing ever. I just, I just care so little about it. And it's just at this point where it's like, it feels like, you know, the career is just realizes that people are just getting bored and jumping ship. Because, you know, the series started out really cool and interesting, and it lost all those interesting elements, and that just sort of sucks. So it's just like, oh hey, now the dudes are like super powerful and then like regenerate, and you know, they're like above human ability and stuff, and they just like destroy people. You know, here's just, like, a group of, like, four people dressed like, you know, punk weirdos just out of nowhere in this, like, super grounded strategic series. And they're just, like, beating demons with, like, nunchucks and melee weapons. And it's like, what the heck are you doing? Why, why would you do this? It's so bad. Uh, it's like, oh hey, this is like this weird group of like crazy nut jobs that like, you know, are just super skilled. And it's like, if this was any other series, that would be cool. But like, why though? That's like, that's not why I got interested in this series for. It's just garbage. Like, no, don't, don't show these people. I hate this. Yeah, because that's just introduced, they can't just, like, you know, leave that alone, though, right? Like, they have to explain that, so, yo, after that just sort of happens out of nowhere, we sort of get this pull in the series where it's like, oh, hey, this, like, kid, Chris, is dying, and his name was never really mentioned before now. <laughs> We need to, like, sneak it to, like, a demon farm and get mess and to save Chris. And it's, I don't, uh, I don't know who Chris is. It's so badly written. <laughs> oh, man, what even happened to this series? Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, they have to save Chris because, you know, no one knows who Chris is, so that's supposed to make you care, I guess. And it was just like, no, we... We need to, like, save Chris now. We'll, like, get a group together. It's gonna be, like, yo, me and, like, this... I, for, I don't even know who else is in the group. It's, like, some girl who knows medicine, and it's, like... I don't think she's Rebecca. I... She's not Connie. I'm pretty sure she's not Connie. No, like, because Connie died, so... Uh, 
I don't even know anymore. <laughs> How she scored had some popularity hold pull like somehow. She like somehow scored high on like popularity. And like I don't even understand. I who how what okay. I guess people just liked your design for some reason. Santa is sneaking to the Steven Farm and there's like Oh, we have to like, yo, know, sneak around and yo. Know, it's gonna be this cool thing, right? We're gonna have to like outthink the dudes and we're gonna have to like plan around. It's gonna be awesome. And then they go in and the dudes are just like immediately catch them on like a random patrol. <laughs> and it's like, no, don't. Uh, just, I just want them to do the original thing again. Just like give us another cool like move them out winning each other and stuff. That was great. Like, have them pose as kids on this new farm that's, like, completely within something this series can do. Like, you can find ways to get back to that point and make something interesting out of this. But no, it's, they severely get caught and, yo, know, after they, like, get the mass and stuff. And, like, yo, know, one of the, like, weirdo punks from earlier just, like, shows up and just kills the demons immediately with, like, no problem at all. And then it just looks at him, right? She just looks at this, like, bag-headed weirdo who's just killing the demon, like, no problem. And she's like, who is he? And, ah, screw this. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, I just hate that so much. Oh man, Cross Starland, what are we doing anymore? Yeah, that gets us cop to now. Just there's the two like major arcs, I guess you'd say. Everything else is just in this weird in between thing. Like it's just falling apart, you know. Like all the kids are just like headshotting demons because they kind of have to. Not they know they regenerate. Like it's just it's so bad and just boring. But yeah, just. You know, if anyone out there is unfamiliar with the series, just check out the MA. It's gonna be great, and then it's gonna be awful, and then it's going to make you hate everything. And that is the promised Narland in a nutshell. I hope the next series this career darks on is, like, way better, because, like, the beginning's awesome. And then nothing. Just, that's all you need. As soon as they leave the farm, just stop watching. It's just, that's enough. <laughs>